Hello and welcome to this tutorial on database connections in Rapid Miner Studio. There are different types of connections which you can do, a relational database, no SQL databases, or a cloud-based storage. We will talk mostly about relational databases, but we'll briefly mention the other types as well. The type of relational database we'll be using today is a Postgres database, but the general setup, which we'll review first, also applies to other database types. We will then show you how you can create a template to connect to databases for you or for your colleagues to reuse. Setting up a database is generally easy. The only thing you need is the JDBC driver and the connection details such as host, port name and so on. So let's get to it. Okay, to create our first connection, we will go to the connection menu and select create connection. The connection type template, which we need to use, is called database. Databases should be your starting point for pretty much all relational databases. For the NoSQL databases Cassandra and MongoDB, please use the respective extensions. Once installed, you will find the templates to set up those here together with other templates for AWS or Azure Cloud data sources. Access to most cloud databases and services works via secure key pairs or access tokens and is straightforward when you have those available. For details on these connections and the NoSQL connectors, please visit the Connect to your data section on our documentation. The next two fields are important pieces to understand the overall connections concept in RapidMiner. RapidMiner connections are set up to be very flexible so you can just create one to import your data and then forget the connection. You can create a connection and embed it in a process to review data each time the process is executed locally. You can of course also do this for processes executed or running on RapidMiner server. Another option is to create a template or skeleton for you to use or others to use where you leave certain parts blank like credentials, database or schema details. Depending on what you want to do, you may want to store this connection locally or on a server. We want to create a simple connection and then a template to be reused locally at first. And so I will give it a bit of an unspecific name. Okay, now this is the main setup dialog here in this info tab. We could add a note, for example, that this is the Postgres DB connection template. Now in this setup tab, you always should start by selecting the type as that will fill in some defaults. If your system is not listed, then use the custom option. I'll fill in all my details, including database and credentials for now, so we can test the connection in a moment. Before you do a test, you should check that there is a database driver available and that the right one is selected. For Postgres and other open source databases, we are shipping a driver, but for others, you may need to get it from your platform vendor. Just store it somewhere, then select it via the folder icon. Here's an important thing to note and remember, the driver will be embedded into your connection. This is great because it means you can copy to reuse or share the connection and the driver will always be there. Keep in mind though that you have to replace the driver in all connection objects when it needs to be updated. If your connection needs additional jar files or native files like DLLs, SOs or DYLibs, then you can add them with import additional libraries. Some libraries contain different drivers, so here you can select the one you want to use. You can adjust your connection string with the help of the URL prefix and the schema separator. These fields don't force you to follow a certain format, so you can get creative, but it is usually fine to keep the default. You can check the final result here on the Setup tab. In case your connection URL still needs to be changed, maybe have a filter applied or similar, then you should use the manual configuration option. OK, we have set up our connection, we have checked the driver is available and selected, and we ensured the proper configuration of our JDBC URL. So let's do a brief test now. Before we continue to more advanced settings and details, let's just save this connection and retrieve some data from our Northwind sample database. Each repository and project, regardless if local or on a server, always has a folder called Connections. From this connection folder, we can simply pull the data into the process panel. 
To choose what we want to extract, we will use the read database operator, which we can find in the operators panel under data access in the subfolder database. To set up the actual query, we can move to the parameters panel. Next, we have the option to choose between retrieving an entire table by selecting the table name. Alternatively, you can use a query file in case you have a long complex SQL statement to retrieve your data or you can use the option Query and create a query yourself. We will look up all the employees of Northwind, so we will just select this table from the Query Builder. After we click on the Run Process button, we get our data displayed. Now that was easy, wasn't it? Alright, now let's come back to the topic of more advanced settings on connections and how to use them as template. We can select to edit the connection right here with the right mouse button. When you're connecting to a database, there are numerous other settings you may want to or need to configure specific to your application and scenario. These settings like connection keep alive, timeout or the batch size can be configured here via the additional properties. The drop-down list will probably look different for you as the content is controlled by the driver you have selected. Now after announcing it twice, we will now look into the option of using the connection as a template. For that, let's remove the username, password and database. Now we select to inject them as parameters. Take note of the macro key here, which shows up as I select the ones I want to use. A macro in RapidMiner is a variable which we can set or which can be extracted during a process execution. Since macros are not protected, we may want to use a more tailored name, which we can do by adding a prefix to our macro keys. You can do that here in the Sources tab. And as we switch back to our injected parameters, this is now set. OK, now we have a database connection template with everything configured. As expected, with these blank, our test fails. In a production process, the injection parameters could be extracted or generated on the fly and then passed in, but in our simple process, we're going to set them manually. Make sure to get the wording right with the prefix and all. Once completed, we can just run this again and you see that the data gets extracted. As mentioned before, we want to use this template not only for us, but also others. So let me share this with data scientist number 7 by copying it to a server location, which we both can connect to. I'll make it accessible and add some details to it here to provide him with the relevant info. Now this is one way to have a flexible input to your connections. Of course users can just copy the template and store their credentials in a local copy instead of using the parameter injection. But there is another option how users can use a template connection object in RapidMiner Server. For that, let's create a copy here before we edit it. As you go to the Sources tab, you can now see that we have the server available as an additional source to define parameters. And so let's configure that here for all and update the info. Again, we need to grant data scientist number seven the proper permissions. Now we're switching roles and we're not the database admin anymore, but we're data scientist number seven using his access to the RapidMiner server.
Under the respective menu entry we can find our copy and it already indicates that we need to add some details. As I go through and add the details you can see that the message says that these are safely stored and encrypted. In fact multiple users can use this very same connection object but each with his or her specific values which then get stored and encrypted. Alright and now once more let's test the connection and see if data scientist number 7 has actually been entering the right details. And being a unicorn he obviously did. We hope you have enjoyed this tutorial and thank you very much for watching.